Well, hello everyone. Hope everyone is doing well. I got something on my face, and this is uh, this is actually Gail take two. I got about three or four minutes into the message uh, before, and I had to stop recording. I didn't have a shirt on. <laughs> I totally forgot. I'm home this afternoon. I had to go to Uptown Campus, which is really weird being in downtown Charlotte. I haven't been in downtown Charlotte except for the concert the other night, which was just on the trail uh, for the tra the train. Uh, ride on in and then over to Panther Stadium, but this I, I took the old way of driving in to Cam Uptown Campus at, for UNC Charlotte, and you get off over there about Seventh Street, and you hang a left, and the buildings down there, and the, we don't even have a parking lot. There's like buildings around the place now. There used to be dirt, and there was nothing there, and now there's stuff all over the place. It's just kind of crazy at the amount of change that's taking place. So why am I telling you all this? Well, I got home this afternoon and I needed to prepare for this for tonight to get this thing uploaded and recorded. Um, I haven't had a chance to do that this week and it's 75 in here, right? We turn the air kind of off when Carol has to go to the office. So I'm like, okay, I'll just take my work clothes, my work shirt, shirt off and um, I'll make myself a cup of coffee, uh, Mary, which I am drinking with my mustache, see? It is very good, thank you. And, uh, you know, it's kind of warm, so I, I just left my shirt off. I went and did some watering outside. I came in. I studied up a little, a little, little bit here to, you know, to figure out what I was going to say, even though I, I kind of know what I'm going to say. But anyway, I started my message, and I looked down, and I don't have a shirt. So, this is my shirt. I refuse to be lukewarm, Mr. Cavello. It's time to get fired up, and I'm excited about tonight's message. So, how is it June already? Today is June 2nd, 2022, and welcome to The Promise Bible devotional. I, I just can't even believe that it's June already because if you really think about it, I mean, you got June and you got July. Families are not even out of school yet for their kids, so they can't take vacation usually until then, right? And at work, we're not allowed to take any time off starting in August. So we actually have eight weeks, Dad, to actually get a vacation in uh, of some sort. That, and that's why I've never in my life have taken more than, than a week off because I just, you just can't do it. I got work all over the place and there's just no time to get everything done and you're trying to fit in some downtime in there and before you get geared back up for fall and 35,000 students come back at you and you, you're just overwhelmed. It's just crazy. It, it, it's it's got to slow down at some time. And I know you keep saying it, Dad, but it's going to have to come at some point. So... Anyway, let's uh, let's focus in here. Uh, maybe the caffeine's talking a little bit. <laughs> Not sure, but uh, prayer request this week is for for Dad. He had a test done uh, this afternoon. Uh, actually, two thirty. It's about right now. So hopefully, uh, the doctor's got some help and some advice, and maybe some tests that are coming up to determine why he's so exhausted all the time. But uh, continue prayers for you, Dad, and for Gail. Gail's going to be leaving here soon. It's coming. I'm going to be missing you. I'm not even going to tell you what the weather is in uh, Long Island, but it's 96, I think, here today. It ain't going to be 96 in Long Island, Gil. Don't worry. It won't be. Uh, continue prayers for Mary and for Wayne, for Morgan and for Jordan. Direction, good choices, and following God. That's what you guys, that's what my prayer is for Morgan and Jordan. So you know, prayers for you guys going forward. Uh, continue prayers for Katie and a uh, baby that's coming in August. Uh, for her grandma KK with dementia and Alzheimer's. Uh, we do have a praise report that Katie had uh, a doctor's appointment this week and everything is cool. So big hurdle to jump over there. So praise God for that. That's good news. Thank you, Katie, for keeping me posted with that. Uh, continue prayers for Olivia. We found that this is uh, my brother's daughter's uh, daughter. And this is my dad's great granddaughter. Olivia, she's got some kind of rash all over her, but it's starting to clear up. Benadryl, supposedly she was allergic to an antibiotic that she was taking, but it uh, looks like things are starting to starting to take a turn for the good. So praise God for that. Uh, continue prayers for uh, Casey. Casey is uh, at NC State doing her internship. She left over the weekend, and yesterday was her first day. So congrats, you had a good first day. That's a good sign, Casey. So excited for you and what's to come there. And continue prayers and uh, praise for, for Nicole, who moved last weekend as well. She uh, moved out of the Concord Mills area and is in the university area. Uh, her roommate is going to be getting married soon, so um, she had to find another place. So I, I pray, Nicole, that that is a good fit for you, that it's safe over there, and uh, you're able to continue to, to grow and do, do the things that you need to do. 
So, uh, it's been a week and a half now after the big tornado, you know, the situation. Yeah, we don't have any situations this week, so <laughs> thank God for that. I'm still cleaning up. I think I'll be doing a little cutting uh, tomorrow on some of the stuff that's on the, on the ground now. Uh, the city has yet to come back or even let us know what the schedule is for them to remove all the rest of the trees. So, it's on the ground. It ain't going nowhere. That's why I'm saying. And it's 96 out. I'm not cutting wood at 96 degrees. Forget it. I ain't doing it. So... Did you know that there is uh, shortages that are coming? I mean, everybody knows that the shelves are empty, the supply chain stinks, we got no truck drivers, we, you know, we've got no diesel, we, we're, we're just making bad decisions left and left and right and right, and there are shortages coming. So I'm just telling you, you take inventory of what you need to do and what you need to have, just like the baby formula stuff. If you can find it, get you some if you need some. Have some for your baby. Just uh, if you can breastfeed, if you're in that place, continue doing that even longer than probably you would normally do because there's no formula anywhere. It's hard to find. Just like uh, wheat's going to be coming soon. There, there's talk that there's going to be a lot, a lot of stuff going to be happening. Olive oil. There are certain companies starting to protect their stock and not sending it out. So I'm just giving you a heads up. And my last and final thing I want to say here is gas now is $4.39. Uh, I had a, a quarter of a tank of gas yesterday and I had to stop for gas since I had to go to uptown today and down to the elementary school in South Charlotte. And I still spent $65. It's just unbelievable. And even Carol's car, I mean, she's got a Civic. It should not cost you $45 to fill up a Civic. I mean, come on. I don't understand what's happening here. But anyway, continue prayers for our lack of leadership in this country and the things that are taking place in Ukraine and in Europe. So we need, some, we need some drastic help here. So let's go to the Lord and get started. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for today. We just thank you for uh, the things mentioned here, the situations mentioned, the needs that are here uh, for healing, for, for special, special needs that, that is here. Also, the things that are not mentioned. Uh, Lord, we just pray and we need you now. Lord, the, everything around us is just absolutely bleak. We just feel like we're in the ring with Mike Tyson and he's just wailing away at us. I mean, many of these families, I, I was uptown today just driving in a normal road that I have taken so many times and there's people uh, all over the roads, on the sidewalks, in the bus stops. I mean, people at the homeless shelter, at the men's shelter that was there, there were just people everywhere. Lord, I know we're hurting and I know many of us are hurting and I pray that this message Tonight, we'll be able to help someone see you a little clearer, to get to know your character a little bit more, to, to know that you love us so much that you gave your one and only son for us as atonement for our sin. Lord, we can be with you if we choose, and we're going we're gonna to see that tonight as we unpack Pharaoh and his hard heart. And it's a hard heart that he chose, and it's by his choice that the things that, that take place, what we're going to read tonight and in the coming weeks, he chose this. And Lord, uh, you want to show your power. You want to show your love. You want everyone to know you. And in your word here tonight, we're going to see that there's uh, those that are yours and those that are not. That is the division. And that's all. There is no other thing else. But Lord, I pray tonight that this message will go uh, before me, get me out of the way, speak what you want to say. And Lord, we give you the praise and the glory and all. Thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Eight minutes in, guys. Let's get going here. So, Exodus 7. We are in Exodus 7. I am taking a sip of coffee because I am pumped. I am ready, Gail. Patty, I am rocking and rolling here. Aunt Sharon, Uncle Jimmy, Dad. Uh, let's get this thing going. Maddie, we're going to do this. Kyle, Morgan, Jordan, we're going to do this. Mr. Gavala. Uh, Donna, Aaron, I, I'm, I'm just blasting out some names here. Roger, Andy, Manish, Dr. Cavella, Mr. Cavella, and Noah. Anna, yes, thank you for watching last week. That's awesome. Last week, right? You guys were with me last week. God shows his patience with patience with Moses and Aaron. It was, it was extreme, right? After God reveals himself to both of them, he gave them a list of things. He gave them a list of promises. These were the promises. Promises that are even true today. Even today, they are true for us. God said, check this out, Gail, I will free you. I will take you as my own. 
I will bring you to the land I promised the patriarchs, and you will know me as your God. All of these promises from God that we have today. Isn't that cool? Isn't that awesome? I will free you. I will take you as my own. I will bring you uh, to the land I promised the patriarchs, and you will know me as your God. Those are true promises. Those are promises that we have today. That is so important. That is so awesome. I got chill bumps just, just saying that. See, all the promises from God that we have today, Moses takes this to the Israelites, to the Israelite leaders whom are down. Remember how dejected they were? They were moaning and groaning. They're unfocused. They're discouraged. It's almost as if they lost all hope. And because Pharaoh is making it tougher on the people, there's longer work hours, there's longer, harder work, same stinking pay, right? We can all relate to that. And when Moses presents what God said to tell them, they didn't even listen. That's, how, that's the place that they were in. They didn't even want to hear it. And you know, we, that we have done that too. Some of us listening to this, if you've made it this far, you heard me say it last week, some of us are in that place where we just don't want to listen. People are giving us good advice. People that have experienced things in life which can see from outside the box because they're not in that mess, that decision place. And then you, you make the decision anyway and you go do what you want to do. Pharaoh is going to do what he's going to do, period. That's it, right? That's a bad place to be. But the Israelites are, are there right there with them. They didn't even listen. They didn't want to hear about it. They didn't want to know nothing about it. So God, Moses goes to God, right? That's a good thing to do. That's a great place to start. And God says, do it again. I don't think Moses is on board with this do it again thing, right? So Take my word and my promises to Pharaoh is what God says. And Moses tells God, why? Why? Why, God? If the Israelites won't listen, why would Pharaoh listen? Let's go back. I am the Lord is what God is saying. Let, let's go back and we'll, we'll set this up, okay? Let's go back to Exodus 6, 28. Now when the Lord spoke to Moses in Egypt, he said to him, I am the Lord. Tell Pharaoh, king of Egypt, everything I tell you. But Moses said to the Lord, since I speak with faltering lips, why would Pharaoh listen to me? And now we go into Exodus 7. Yeah, this is, this is going to get good. Hang on. Ready? Then the Lord said to Moses, see, I have made you like God to Pharaoh. Mm. And your brother Aaron will be your prophet. You are to say everything I command you and your brother Aaron is to tell Pharaoh to let the Israelites go out of this country. Again, God is showing great, great patience here. God doesn't get mad and he doesn't call Moses out for disobeying and again, telling him with excuses. He clearly, clearly tells him what to do. Sometimes we need that. Sometimes we need to just do what God is telling us to do. Don't worry about all the other stuff. Don't worry about how this is going to work. Don't worry what people are going to think. Sometimes we just have to do what God tells us to do. That's sometimes the best advice, right? Thankfully, Moses does this, and he's not like everyone else, and he's not like us, and he's not like some people that are listening on here, doing what you want to do regardless of what anybody else says. Moses does exactly what God tells him to do. And sometimes we also need this, right? Sometimes we look back at this process of what, what just happened here when we do that. Like what, how do we even process what just happened? We're able to look back and see that change. And we know that that happened because we just did what God told us to do. That's awesome. So God makes Moses like a God to Pharaoh. God understands what's happening here. God understands the human race. God understands our thinking. God understands how we move and make decisions. So he tells Moses, I am going to make you like a God to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh didn't even know God above all the other gods. They had gods all over, right? But he didn't know the one true God, the God of the Israelites. But God did speak, Gail, God did speak Pharaoh language. He understood Pharaoh. He knows Pharaoh. Pharaoh may not know him, but he knows what gets in 
Pharaoh's head. He knows how to talk to him. He knows what to do. So he makes Moses like a god to Pharaoh. He and the Egyptian kingdom worshiped many, many gods. So God pointed to Moses like a god to Pharaoh. And God would use Moses like a god to Pharaoh to speak through him to show Pharaoh his power and his authority. And we're only two verses in. Are you psyched? I'm, I'm pumped. Let's go to verse three. Verse three. But I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and though I multiply my, my miraculous signs and wonders in Egypt. I said it before. Pharaoh is going to do what Pharaoh is going to do. We can relate to that because we all have done it, and some of us are doing it now. With wrong motives and wicked intentions, Pharaoh is putting his rewards, his stuff, his claim, my imprints, this is all about me in front of the kingdom, right? We talked about servant, servanthood leadership last week, and we ain't, we ain't got that here. God here is strengthening Pharaoh's hard heart because he chose it. Now God's got to show him who he is. I am the Lord. God now is turning up the game to Pharaoh with miraculous signs and wonders, things that they have never seen before, things that you can't explain, things you never thought of. God's going to show him. It's coming. Let's go to verse four. <clears throat> but I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and though I multiply my miraculous signs and wonders in Egypt, he will not listen to you. He's telling Moses this. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt, and with mighty acts of judgment, I will bring out my divisions, my people, the Israelites. Notice what it says there. Highlight that in your Bible. I will bring out my divisions. We hear that all the time today. Division, division, division. People are divided. The country is divided. You're left, you're right. You're a Democrat, uh, Republican. You're black and white. You're this, that. There is no differences here. God is going to bring out my division. My people, it doesn't say my black people, my white people, my Mexican friends, my family. It doesn't say anything, curly hair, blonde hair. It doesn't say anything about that. You're either his or you're not. That is the only division a Christian should be asking and talking about. There is no other things. If, if you're an African-American brother or sister, you're my brother or sister in Christ. That's it. It's clearly right here. Otherwise, God would have said it. That's the only division. Don't you let the media in this country and the leadership of this country tell you any different. There's only two sets of people. We all have the red blood and we all feel and, and have pain and feelings the same. We all struggle with the same things. We're either his or we're not, period. That's it. That's all I'm going to say about that. So let me say it one more time because that's important. Then I will lay my hand on Egypt, and with the mighty acts of judgment, I will bring out my divisions, my people, the Israelites. And the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring the Israelites out of it. Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded them. Sometimes you just got to do what God tells you to do. Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 when they spoke to Pharaoh. Dad, Uncle Jimmy, Gail, since you're the patriarchs of this church little family thing we got going on here, we're sending you to D.C. <laughs> no, we're not, because Pharaoh didn't listen, and our leadership in this country ain't going to listen either. I just have to put that in there. They ain't going to listen, are they? Heck no, they're going to do what they're going to do. So wicked and no intentions of the people, right? They represent themselves, and God knows this. God knows this today. God knows what's happening here. Pharaoh said he didn't know the Lord, but God is going to show him, I am the Lord. Check this out. Let's go to verse eight. And then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, when Pharaoh says to you, perform a miracle, then say to Aaron, take your staff and throw it before, down before Pharaoh and it will become a snake. Verse 10. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and did just as the Lord commanded Aaron threw his staff down in front of Pharaoh and his officials, and it became a snake. The first meeting with Pharaoh did not go well at all, right? You, you were with me when we unpacked that. And God sends Moses again. Now the second round with Pharaoh, Moses does exactly what God says to do. And here we are. You ready for this? Pharaoh then summoned 
wise men and sorcerers and Egyptian, uh, Egyptian magicians also did the same things by their secret arts. Each one threw down his staff and it became a snake, but Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Yet Pharaoh's heart became hard and he would not listen to them just as the Lord had said. Magic, magicians, it's, this time is revealing the dark world and it is showing us that it was fully alive in Egypt in this time. It was fully alive in the kingdom. The magicians threw down their rods and staff and they too turned into snakes. Ha ha. But God shows his superiority, Gale, and his authority by his snake swallowing up the others. Signs and wonders. Excellent. Let's keep going. There's more. Verse 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is unyielding. He says this to Moses. Pharaoh's heart is unyielding. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he does, as he goes out to the water. Wait on the bank of the Nile to meet him and take in your hand the staff that was changed into a snake. Then say to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews has sent me to say to you, let my people go so that they may worship me in the desert. But until now, you have not listened. You have not listened. This is what the Lord says. By this, you will know that I am the Lord. With the staff that is in my hand, I will strike the water of the Nile and it will be changed into blood. The fish in the Nile will die and the river will stink. The Egyptians will not be able to drink its water. This is the first of many signs to come. This is the very first one. Remember, okay, Egypt is a great kingdom. It is in the dry desert, okay? It's hot there and water is life. You can't live there without water. That's what the Nile means to this kingdom in this region. It is life to the people, the animals, the plants, the whole region. It, keep, it brings life. The Nile and its water providing life to this entire region. The Egyptians knew the value of this water. Like the wells in the patriarch's time, right? Back in Canaan, remember? The wells signified a, a holding place. It was a place where it brought life. It had li livestock there, plants. It, it supported life in the desert. They knew the importance of this. And the Egyptians built water holding, water cleaning, water storing aquifers to sustain the land and the kingdom. They had 400 years. Remember, the Israelites are there 400 years. They go way back before that. They've had time to figure this thing out. They got this system down to a pat, right? Water is life. The Egyptians knew how to care for the Nile and sustain the kingdom through its resources. That is so important. God, through his mercy and Pharaoh's hard heart, God turns the water, all water, into blood. And by this you shall know that I am the Lord, he declares. Verse 19, the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over the streams and the canals, over the ponds, and all the reservoirs, and they will turn to blood. Blood will be everywhere in Egypt, even in the wooden buckets and stone jars. If it had come from the Nile, it was turning into blood no matter where it was. And Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord, <clears throat> Lord had commanded. He raised his staff in the presence of Pharaoh and his officials and struck the water of the Nile, and all the water was changed into blood. Verse 21, the fish in the Nile died and the river smelled so bad that the Egyptians could not drink its water. Blood was everywhere in Egypt. <clears throat> 10 signs are coming, folks. 10 signs are coming and the first one is down, Gail. Water turned into blood by the hand of God. Pharaoh, with a chance to repent and turn from his ways, all the way up until now and in this moment, he has a chance to turn and repent from his ways. He's holding the Israelites in slavery and Pharaoh chose this. He chose this. God shows his mighty hand over the Egyptian gods, right? Remember, God of the rivers. There's a God of the river here and God shows his authority over that. The Nile was worshiped and God shows his complete power over the Nile and the Nile, the God of the Nile. 
And now with the Nile completely useless and unable to provide anything of use to the people, verse 22 comes. But the Egyptian magicians did the same things by their secret arts and Pharaoh's heart became hard. He would not listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had said, verse 23, highlight this. Instead, he turned and went into the palace and did not even take this to heart. And all the Egyptians dug along the Nile to get drinking water because they could not drink the water of the river. They didn't even listen. He didn't even listen. Pharaoh turns and goes into his palace. Dad, how many times have we seen that recently, huh? Much like another leader that we know, answering no questions from the people, a position of leadership, but no servant leadership. If they really wanted to do magic, let's go to the magicians, we'll change that real quick. If they really wanted to, really wanted to do the magic, they would have turned the blood back into water. So they dug. They dug wells to get new water. And see, check this out, Mary Wayne. Listen, Satan cannot perform any miracle of any amount of goodness. Roger, it is zero. Mr. Cavallo, zero. Devil, only destruction lies in schemes. He can't do anything that is good, nothing. What good is an area where people live with water that is polluted to the point that nothing lives in it? Nothing lives in it. They can't drink it. They can't swim in it. They can't bathe in it. It is useless. It smells horrible. What good is it? Pharaoh, let my people go. Let my people go. This was a warning to Pharaoh, Gail, of what is to come. There's more coming. There's 10 signs coming. We're only on number one. There is time to turn back. There is time. That goes for us today. There is time right now. There is time for you. Don't waste that time. Make that decision. Turn from, from your sin. Give God a chance to, to overcome in your life and, and take your heart and have a place to, for him to speak into you. Do that. You have time now. For now, there is time to turn back because of God's grace and his mercy. There is time. Pharaoh chose this. It's going to get worse. Signs of miraculously are coming and it's only going to get worse. Lord, we just thank you for tonight's message. We just thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for your example here. We thank you for that showing what disobedience and a hard heart looks like in not only leadership, but just as a man, a man that has chosen this. And you want to know, you want him to know who you are, that you are the Lord. He has many gods. This kingdom has many gods that they worship and they don't know the one true God, the one that's over all the other fake idols. You are the only God, Lord. That's the one that they should have known. That's the one that we should know. Lord, bad things are coming. And Lord, I know that there are folks today that are in a place where they're hurting today. And Lord, I know that I, I know that you are trying to say today, and I'm, I'm gonna share this with you guys because it's important. And I know it's gonna help someone tonight. And if you're in that place right now where you're struggling and you just don't know where to turn, there's uncertainty around you, you don't know where to turn, you don't want to listen to anybody, you're trying to do what you want to do and it's just not working, or maybe it's in a little sweet spot right now and it's going to, it's going to take a turn. You've seen it before, you've lived through it before, maybe it's an addiction, maybe it's a relational addiction, addiction. Maybe, maybe, I don't know what it is, it's a, a struggle of some type. And God says, I know you have a lot on your mind right now your family, your health, the health of your loved ones, your finances, your career, whatever it is, it feels like the weight of the world is on your shoulders and you feel alone and it's hard getting up in the morning. God says, my child, if you know God, he calls you that. My child, you are not alone. Lay those concerns at my feet. Give it all to me. I will send you help. I will send you healing. I will send you resources. I will provide promises, just like the beginning part of this chapter that God gives us. I will send you help. I will send you healing. I will send you resources. I will provide. 
I will make a way for you. All the resources of heaven are with you. Don't worry. God says, I have your back. God says, I have your back. And Lord, that is my prayer for someone tonight. I pray over that person that is struggling. Lord, you're, you're, te <clears throat> you're teaching us a lot here. Lord, you're stretching us. You're building our faith. We're building our trust. We're getting to know your character. Lord, these are all important things. And Lord, I, I pray that people are watching this all the way through. And they're just not listening to the, if I made the uh, prayer list in, in the beginning. Lord, there's so much more here. This is like training. Lord, we can't go through life just going through the motions. I get on my bike every single day. Well, not every single day, but when I do get on the bike every single week, when I am training, I am training hard. I am sweating. I have a goal in mind. I want to accomplish something. I want to be healthy. I want to be there for my grandkids. I want to be there for the friends and family and help my neighbors. I want to be a good example for you. I can't do that on my own. And I have to go about doing life like that, like I'm training, like I'm a true athlete. And Lord, we can't just read your word every once in a while or go to church on Sunday and forget you the rest of the week. We have to be, our faith has to be in training like athletes. We got to be strong. The devil is going to be on us. When we make a decision to follow you, everything is going to look like everything is wrong. There's going to be stumbling blocks. There's going to be things that happen. There's going to be things that are going to test us and stretch us and have to grow our faith in order to stay there. Stamina is my word. Stamina is the word that you've given me, the word that I got to stand on, that I got to hang in there with, that no matter what is being thrown at me, no matter what tornado comes over, no matter friends walking out, relationships that have gone bad, whatever the situation is, Lord, bad health, a bad decision, whatever, we got to know that stamina is standing strong, that I'm hanging in there, that the people that are listening and going through this entire Bible study with us every week on Thursday is tuning in and listening to this and reading word for word what we're studying as you're unpacking this incredible history book that you have given us so that we may know you and, what, how, and know what's ahead. Lord, this is our guidebook. It's not an old book that should be taken out of our schools. It's not a book about slavery and division and everything that the world makes it out to be or wants it to be because they don't believe. Lord, help us to hang in there. Help us to have the stamina. Help us to stay strong. Help us have a faith like an athlete. Lord, we love you. I pray that this goes forward. It's in Jesus' name we pray, all for your glory. Amen. Amen, guys. 33 minutes in. I hope this was impactful. I hope it was great for you guys. I hope it meant something to you. I hope you watch till the end and not give up somewhere in the middle and just got to check in there or whatever. You know, oh, thanks for, you know, I send it out and you say thanks. I hope you're really digging in. I really hope so. Next week, Maddie, if you're watching this till the end, you know we're going to be talking about something that's scary. See, Maddie's afraid of frogs, and the plague of frogs is coming. <laughs> it's going to be great. I can't wait to unpack that. Maddie, you're going to be on my mind all week this week as I unpack this thing. So uh, I hope it, chapter 8 looks like it's going to be pretty long. It might, Gail, don't get excited, but it may take us a couple weeks to get just through chapter 8 alone, okay? I'm just saying. We, we, this is not a, you know, we got to stay on a pace here. We're going to take it as God gives it to us. That, that's it. That's how you learn, right? You, you can only take in so much before you can dissect it and have it work on you and everything. If you take in too much, you become overwhelmed and eh, pretty soon you give up, right? So that's it. I'm going back to my coffee now. Love you guys. Stay well. Stay pe peaceful. Do something that takes faith today. Be courage.